Right, hello. Um, this is another video about production line. Um, I'm the coder and designer, uh, Cliff. Um, I'm actually going to do a different sort of video uh, this week, just as an experiment. Um, if you're not interested in really technical stuff, you might kind of like not care and want to skip it. Um, but I'm just interested to know if uh, people are interested in these sorts of videos. Um, because I'm the programmer, what I thought I'd do is I'd do a little video about some of the tools that I use to develop the game and talk about the technical side of making the game. Because um, I know quite a few people are interested in how games are made. Um, probably a few people that follow me are programmers and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just going to show you three, three um, different uh, pieces of software um, that I use mostly for kind of optimizing stuff. So I was going to show um, AQ Time, which is Profiler, and um, Nvidia Insight, if I can remember how to launch it, um, which is a graphics debugger, and also um, the concurrency visualizer, which is great. Um, and nobody, no, that nobody uses it, and they should do. Anyway, so I'll probably split this in, into three bits. So um, I write my own engine. So production line is coded in C++ from scratch in an engine written by me. Developed in Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio, which is commercial. I can't remember how much it costs, to be honest. Um, I'm not using the very latest version. I think we're using the 2015 version or even older. Oh, I, I hate that dialogue because I never know what it means. Um, 2013. It's four years old, but like, who, who cares? What have they done to Visual Studio since? I don't know. Um, so what else is there? So there's hardly any middleware. So like, well, there's sound middleware. That's it. So I have the source code to everything, which makes this sort of stuff um, a lot more useful. Uh, and the game uses DirectX 9, which I know is quite old now, but it has compatibility across everything. And I know it really well um, because I'm sort of doing a 2D game, although I use 3D hardware a lot. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, there's not an enormous amount in, in newer versions of DirectX that really justify it, although it's kind of like getting close to the point where I should upgrade my engine. But there's a huge cost in terms of time in doing that. Anyway, so uh, so this is Visual Studio with all its wonderful windows and you know all my wonderful, amazing code. Um, I play about a lot with syntax, but I tend uh, the the syntax colouring. Um, but this is what I've settled on, this sort of font and uh, colouring and everything. I use some software called um, Visual Assist by Whole Tomato that does better IntelliSense. So it kind of automatically guesses what I'm going to type and, and um, there's all kinds of like uh, minor little things that Visual Assist does that's really good. So anyway, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you um, software called AQ Time. This is AQ Time on another monitor, which you can't see, so I'm going to have to put it over here. Uh, and this is a profiler. So what it does is it will take a version of the game you're working on, or any game, which is interesting, if it has debug symbols in it, and you can launch it, and then you can look at all of the timings. It's a really complicated piece of software. It's quite expensive. I think it's about $800 or £800. I can't remember. Um, it's a lot, but it's it's a worthy investment um, if you ever have like performance problems, as it were. So um, so what I need to do is I need to launch the game from within a few time. So I've set it up to profile everything, but only at a function level. So you can do stuff at function level or line level. If you do, or you can do a combination. If you do line level, it's it, that that will really slow things down. Um, it's worth pointing out I'm going to run the release build version of the game with debug symbols, which I leave in anyway because it makes hardly any difference. Um, so I need to make sure that the volume's low on this actually. So when it launches, I might turn it off. Um, yeah, so let's just turn the volume down completely. So we're running inside the profiler right now. So it's a bit slower, quite a bit slower. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load uh, my latest test game. So that's a little bit slow, but not massively. So here's, here's um, a late sort of test, test build of the game, blah, blah. And what I'm interested in, for example, I happen to know is a little bit slow, a little bit slow, is um, when I do this, 
Now, it's not massively slow or anything, but if I've got a really, really busy factory and I do this a lot and there's a lot of stuff going on, um, it can skip very slightly. I'm talking about these increase and decrease, stuff like that. So hitting that button um, causes a slight skip. Now I've got a really high spec PC. So if you've got a really low spec PC, you can probably tell when I hit reduce or increase that it maybe stutters very slightly. Um, I've optimized the game a lot, so um, there's not gonna be a lot of it. So anyway, quit that. And then, ooh, charts and graphs. So uh, let me maximize this as much as I can without um, you not being able to see stuff. Um, AQ time, very accurate, very complicated, um, very useful. So um, if I look at if I look at all of the threads because it's a multi-threaded game, if I look at all of the threads in the whole game, that's that's this here. So the red bit is used by that top function game proc inside that is another function that's drawing and that's flip so that's waiting the green is just slack that we've got because it, it's pretty optimized that's drawing the factory that's processing the frame and i can keep drilling down and drilling down and drilling down but um i'm looking for a specific thing so i'm looking inside i've sorted this by routine name if i go to gui underscore vehicle design browser and then it's vehicle design increase that is the button push that I think slow so if I click on that I've selected that it will tell me the maximum time uh, in microseconds that's that's really granular okay uh, 1286 um, I think yeah, that average time there I think that's set in a different I think that's actually set differently oh, is that minimum t oh that's with children on oh, max time with children is what I care about so I care about everything that happens when I click that button so if I click on if I click on this um, basically three things happen when I hit that when when I um, I click that it updates values it refreshes the price and there's this tiny little function that doesn't even show up here so if I think is it the updating values function if I click in there it will tell me there's another function called um, calc fully equipped price which is the red if I drill down a bit further I can see that does loads of calls to get upgrade with feature. If I go up back up one, I can see over here there's 46 calls to calc fully equipped price. If I click in there, I'm then making ooh, 4,140 calls. This is just on one mouse click um, to do get upgrade with feature, which is probably a really quick function. And if I click in there, yeah, you can see actually that one of the functions it calls has feature calling 214,000 times in the whole run of the game okay so um, it could be that I'm calling that function far too much it could be that it's too slow it could be somewhere else so what you can do then if I go up one if I think calc fully um, calc fully equipped price that could be my slow function so I can look here and I can see where some of the codes going but interestingly I can then click on the editor and actually look at the source code Ta -da! And then I can look at um, what I'm doing here. I can see why I'm making so many calls to the sub functions. I can look on the call graph. Excellent. I can see how many calls come into here, how many calls I make out, where they go, where other calls come in, and so on and so on. It's hot here at the moment. Now, you can actually go further than this because what you can do is you can do line level. So for example, I could just take this class, vehicle design, and I could say, just profile that at a line level, and then you get timings for each individual line of code. Um, you should also be able to look at the uh, assembly code right here. I don't really know assembly that well at all, so it doesn't mean much for, to me, but I can sometimes look there and go, oh my God, what is all this stuff? When I thought I was just returning a float, uh, for example. So you can look at an incredibly detailed and low level at what goes, what what happens, what flows from a single action. And I think the call graph is, is very, very interesting, especially if you do this. If you sort ev everything in your game by hit cam, you go all the way up here. Um, function here called sort objects. It's rather worrying. 
which I call um, in that little time that we recorded um, 16 million eight hundred and ten thousand four hundred and sixty one times now you might think well, Jesus Christ that's insane what are you doing Cliff that's absolutely nuts but there's two things that are interesting here first it's been called from the thread manager which means it's probably in otherwise idle threads anyway um, and if I look at the whole thing of percentage with children, that's 0.22%, which means it's that's the, the biggest function. It's actually not a big deal, even though I call it that many times. It's a little bit of a big deal, actually. I should, uh, I should maybe look into that. Um, anyway, uh, one of the other things that you can do with this is this is the entire game that I'm looking at here. Go back to details. Um, so these are all the functions in the game. But I, uh, I've coded like a multi-threaded engine, so I can look at particular threads. I can look at this thread here and see, well, what do, you, what do you do? What are you spending all your time doing, for example? I go percentage time with children, like that. So 36% of the time it's actually, uh, sorry, 19.9% 9 .9 of the time it's actually processing a task. So in other words, 80% of that thread is idle, which is interesting. Um, so if I'm if I'm having performance issues, maybe I should think about moving more stuff to that thread. Um, if I look at this thread, about the same, 20% utilization, 17%, um, 21%, which is good because it shows that the load balancing of my thread management is pretty good. Um, that I think is the main thread. I think it's quite hard to tell because. Oh, and and here's an interesting one. Um, this is just the uh, the thread that handles callbacks from the sound system, so that's all it does. So it's quite interesting if you're good at multi-threading. Um, you know, it's quite cool, and you can save old um, playthrough snapshots, so you can compare. You could, I could make a change to the code, come in, reprofile it, and then just flip between the two. Um, anyway, that's a really high-level um, kind of like. Uh, very simplistic overview of what AQ time is like, which I spend a lot of time in when I'm when I'm profiling, um, uh, when I'm optimizing rather. Um, so you've got the call graph, you've got the call tree as well if you prefer it in that view. Um, you can also um, have an event view and a monitor so that you can you can you can do code that um, that sort of says make a note every time I allocate one of these, and then you can see them in real time allocating. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, you shouldn't really allocate anything at runtime anyway in an ideal world. Anyway, um, so basically, um, the, it's a huge, complicated, um, spreadsheety uh, program that is very helpful. This is AQ time. It's a profiler. It's about eight hundred pounds or dollars. I can't remember. I, I, I should know. Um, and it is very, very good. There are others as Vtune. And there's others. I think there's one built into Visual Studio, but I didn't think much of that at all in comparison, um, which is why I, I bought this again to get the latest version. Um, that's one of the three tools that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to stop recording now and then go into the others um, if I can if I can get that away. <laughs> oh. Okay, right, okay, I think that works, so we're back. So this is um, another uh, program that I use, not as, not that much at the moment because I've done a lot of optimization, but I love it, um, and you might find it interesting. It's called NVIDIA Insight. Um, there are other programs like this. Intel have a really good one called GPA. Um, for their graphics chips. You have to have the one that's pertinent for the graphics chip on the PC you're using. Um, to be honest, I don't know if ATI, AMD, whatever, um, if if they have an up-to-date one or not. I know they've got one because I've used it ages ago. Um, but I have an, an NVIDIA card. I have a 980 Ti, I think. Um, so I use NVIDIA Insight. It can be a bit of a pain. It's free, by the way. Um, it can be a bit of a pain to install and to get it right and to adjust the properties. Um, one of the interesting things is you can adjust the properties to launch any game you want. You can do you can do this with any game you want. Um, I think I've done it to some friends' games to help them out. Um, I don't know if you can prevent it running or something. I really should try. Anyway, so um, I've got it installed in Visual Studio, and I've got this little menu here, and I'm going to start graphics debugging, and that will launch production line. So 
here we have production line how exciting um and you'll notice ooh, what's all but what's all this clip how exciting look at all these extra uh windows how do i do you know, control z gives you the hud and then you can move them around and and stuff and make them bigger and everything um let's turn it off one of the things that i that i think is really cool about this is is this one this histogram which is primitives per draw um you don't want to draw a lot of times um every time you tell a graphics card draw some stuff uh it kind of stalls it like stops and basically gathers its wits and goes right what are we doing um and then like flushes all the stuff that um that, that it's previously doing so it has to like stop what it's doing effectively or wait until it ends and then do your thing so if for example when i'm drawing this screen if um i'm drawing each character as a separate draw call that's stupid because I'll be drawing the N, then I'll be drawing the E, then I'll be drawing the W. You can't be doing that. I mean, you could with this because not much of it. Um, because there's loads and loads of draw calls per frame. You don't have long. You've got about 12 milliseconds to draw everything. So you don't want loads of draw calls. So what you need to do is you need to batch stuff together. So it's like, here's a thousand triangles. Here's 2000. Um, like that. Funnily enough, what you don't want to do is do, here's 100,000, because then there's no concurrency. You've basically got two chips. You've got the chip on the video card, you've got the chip on the motherboard. Ideally, they're both working all the time doing cool shit. So what you want to do is build up a certain amount of graphics and say, draw that. And while you're drawing that, I'll get ready for the next lot. And then I'll push that through. And you keep a concurrency where both things are going together. And I'll talk about that a little bit more um, with the next tool um but anyway so this graph here histogram prims per draw is is interesting and important because what it's got here there's one two three four seven eleven nineteen thirty one i know it seems completely ridiculous so that's saying that that number of draw calls there which is about 40 i'm only doing um three and for complicated reasons drawing a square um is drawing three just don't worry about it okay um <laughs> so I don't want to be doing loads and loads of little draw calls. I, what I want is big draw calls. So up here is better. But this screen, nobody cares because it's just a title screen. So let's load in that same game. What was it? One, two, four, test. Um, this is all like real time. So if I zoom out, everything will change, blah, blah, blah. Look at that. So cause if, I'm, if I'm zooming in there, it, it, that's not too bad. I've got some inefficient drawing here, like one-off things. But I've got some there. What's that? That's like 50 something. So that's quite a few things being drawn together. Um, and it, it kind of it kind of changes as I go in and out and depending what's on the screen. And if we add other GUI elements, um, that's going to change things. I would suspect that that changes things quite a bit. Now, I don't know why these aren't working. These are normally working. These other uh, little things there. Probably some stupid setting. Um, I don't know. But anyway, I'll show you the really cool thing about this. There's loads of things, actually. Um, so let me just go to... I don't want to do that yet. That's the exciting thing I'm building up to. Ooh. Um, control D is depth complexity. Now... Oh, there we go. I'm not actually using a, a depth buffer, so, so let's screw that. Let's do Control W. I've screwed up loads of textures doing this. Uh, so that's a wireframe view. Cool, huh? Um, what do we have? Control T's 2x2 two two textures. Um, you might think, how is that helping? <laughs> uh, what that's doing is it, it replaces every texture in the game with the same texture. The same tiny, tiny little coloured texture. So what that means is no effort is spent moving uh, video card memory around. Because uh, we're, we're not using any. We're only using the same texture for everything. The idea is, if you turn this on and your frame rate doubles, then it's like, shit, I'm using far too many massive textures. Um, if it makes no difference, and it hasn't to me, let's put it back. What is that? Control T. Um, it, it screwed up loads of stuff. Don't worry why. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll relaunch it in a second. Um, 
then that's a sign that I don't have a texture problem. There's other stuff you, that, you, that you can do. You can turn off shaders. It might not make much difference, depending what we're looking at. I do use shaders for some stuff. Um, you can change scissor X and stuff like that. There's a really cool thing, um, which I'm going to relaunch it to show you because I, I, I want everything to like render properly. Um, we need to turn that off, in fact, in order to kill it. So let's relaunch it. Oh, come on. Right. Dark graphics debugging. I love optimizing. It's just the best thing ever. Um, okay, so... Um, I might try and load a really big game. What was that? Actually, super late game. This might crash or something. I'm in the middle of coding stuff. Huge! Huge stuff. Um, so, let me get a suitably complicated scene. That's fairly complicated, isn't it? So what I'll do is I'll control Z. This is the greatest thing in the, the whole universe. And click that. Whoa! Nothing changed, isn't it amazing? But it did! Because this has frozen the game and kept a snapshot of this frame. So this little thing at the bottom, I'm pointing at it. Why am I pointing? You can't see my fingers. Why am I pointing? <laughs> this thing at the bottom, um, I don't know if you can see that, along the bottom there, um, this is called a frame scrubber, and it's the greatest thing in the history of the universe because you can do this. Whoa! Okay, which um, probably doesn't make any sense. Basically, this is how we draw. So I'm not sure if there's. Can I use? You should be able to use arrow keys or something. You can't, can you? How annoying! But anyway, this is a very slow version of how I draw a single frame of production line. Okay, but there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of events. There's 2,200 events, but they're not all draw calls. Um, although you can do, you can do like a thousand draw calls or whatever. Um, so that's the order in which I do stuff, and it's ordered that way for very complicated technical reasons that I won't go into. Um, but if you look here, you can see the texture that I'm using, and this is um, what we call a texture atlas, where loads of graphics, not all of them because they don't all fit, but loads of graphics from the game get packed by a system that automatically packs them. I coded. Um, into here and we just grab them and draw them in chunks and it will highlight for you uh, although you may not be able to see it like again I want a point and that's no good but here 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 there and there all of those like props those bits of uh, slot is all one draw call so it's all done in one bonk and that there is another cache of, that's a real-time cache of all the cars. The cars are very complicated to draw in order to get them looking right. So I cache them in another um, texture there. And you see what I jumped to there? That, believe it or not, is an animating robot that's been split into many different pieces. And I've got my own kind of file format that, um, that optimizes them and, and, and shrinks them and compacts them and compresses them. Um, and that there, I think, is one of the little guys with a yellow helmet um, doing something. I think, or is it? Oh no, that might be a, that might be a robot as well. Might be another robot. Um, and there you can see, like, like there, there was a really simple tile there that was just being used. Um, so this is this is very very helpful if you're a graphics programmer. And there's all sorts of other exciting tools here. They've captured this. Uh, uh, anyway, let's not get distracted by all that. Um, this is really interesting stuff. Um, again, if you're a graphics program, if not, who cares? Um, because if there are problems, it's very, very easy to spot them with this stuff. Um, because you can kind of tell. One of the things that, that, that you often get wrong is you draw something and then you draw it again later. It's just the way, like, you know, coding works. Um, but you can see it happen here, which is quite interesting, because I used to draw a lot of stuff several times. Got a bug there. That, that shouldn't be there, those white things. I'm drawing over them, though. So I never noticed. So I'm wasting some of your graphics chip doing that. Whatever that is, I need to cut that out. Um, so that's a bug. We just found a bug. Um, 
Anyway, if, you, if you've got a, a fairly complicated engine, um, and it is quite a complicated engine, um, it's, it's good to have something like this so you can sort of verify what's going on and that you're not drawing stuff twice. And also because you can see what things are drawn after what other things, um, you can kind of work out how to do texture packing. I did write a, a sort of dynamic, sort of predictive texture packing algorithm, but it, it wasn't actually any faster. It was just a load of grid. Um, and then I can just hit space and go back to normal, and here we are. So anyway, that is NVIDIA Insight. It does loads more stuff than that, and it's very, very, very cool. But I, lo I love the, um, what is it, it's Control Z, that, yeah, I love this. This is great. You can immediately see here at the bottom, there's a lot less draw calls. Um, and that's important because if we zoom out, we see more of the map. So I have to have a system that has a lot less draw calls. Otherwise, um, the frame rate would drop when you zoomed out. And we can't have that. So there you go. Also very handy for the user interface stuff. Um, you can see there's some room for additional batching there. But at least like when I draw those numbers up the top there. They're one draw, another draw. Those two could be batched. Um, that's making it sound a lot simpler than it is. It really isn't. It's a nightmare. Anyway, that's NVIDIA Insight. I'm going to stop this now and then I'm going to talk about the last one, which I love, which is the concurrency visualizer. Stop, stop, stop. So, um, I was going to do um, the third part of this video. I was going to show you the concurrency profiler, which is amazing. And I can't, and I'll show you why. Uh, the concurrency visualizer. So, you know, start with current project. I mean, yeah, no, that's not an issue. That's not an issue. Check this out. Wow, the concurrency profiler. No. The trace is corrupted. Since when did... I think this is the creator's flipping update. The Windows has stopped me creating stuff. Oh, God. Um, so, what a pain in the ass. So, I've been trying to fix that for the last hour and I've given up. So anyway, hopefully this was vaguely interesting. I don't know. Um, next week when I do a video, we'll actually talk about um, game stuff. But I hope this was vaguely interesting. Um, I can talk a lot about code stuff if people are interested. I don't know. Anyway, I am Cliff. I am the coder of Production Line. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next week.